praise the Lord for this Lord's Day that we can be together. And um, I really feel that we haven't really had enough time to, to meet everyone. as several uh, first-time guests with us today, and uh, we're so glad that each of you could be here. So I'm going to stop talking. We're going to take two to three minutes to continue to greet and fellowship one another. Program. And so in just a couple of moments after I give some announcements, I'm going to let two of the fuel team members come up and just give a, a brief testimony. And uh, they're also going to be providing special music today. But I also want to say Happy Father's Day. All of our fathers, would you please stand at this time? All fathers. All right, let's give them a hand. All right, you may be seated. You may be seated. And I also just want to um, say how glad we are that Joshua and Holly Beth are here. And of course, two weekends ago, they were married. And they were here on Wednesday, but I wanted just to go in and embarrass them one more time. So let's give them a hand. Why don't you guys stand up? Let's give them a hand. All right. Thank you. I should have brought a glass and a spoon up here to do that. Just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. All right. Let's go on and open up also with our theme verses. They're on the back of your bulletin. These are our verses for May and June. We have new verses before you know it. And we'll say this reference together, and then these several verses as well. Let's say these all together. Ephesians 4, 25 through 30. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed to the day of redemption. So, fathers, I almost forgot to mention that we do have a small gift for you. Uh, everything is edible this year. Last year, it was a small book, and hopefully no one ate the book. But this year, everything is edible. There's peanuts in the lobby, chocolates, and uh, some trail mix, and even some beef jerky. So, help yourself, guys, uh, to any of the goodies back there. Make sure you take that. And uh, if there's any left over, we'll, we'll have them here tonight as well for whoever did not... Uh, get to receive that. All right, let me just mention, I received this from Wes and Linda Borkhart, and Brian and Gloria, I was told this was not a surprise, so hopefully you're not surprised. But um, you are invited to an open house in honor of Brian and Gloria Borkhart's 55th anniversary. Their anniversary is tomorrow. Hey, I, I say we should give them a hand too. All right, so you are invited to an open house this on Saturday, excuse me, on Saturday, June 29th from 1 to 5 p.m. at Wesley and Linda Borkarts, and I will leave the address, I think most of you know where they live, but I'll leave this posted um, on the, the bulletin board, and if you could RSVP, Wesley, uh, his number is here, and also uh, Linda's number is here to text them uh, to let them know if you are able to come. Again, that's the Saturday after VBS. Our VBS starts a week from tomorrow. So we are going to be having a VBS meeting for all workers uh, tonight, and workers receive their t-shirts tonight, and also all of the children uh, who are participating, again, this is K-5 through 6th grade, all of um, our children from our church uh, can receive their t-shirts tonight as well. And uh, we're looking forward to that. Please be praying for our VBS. Also want to mention that you might want to check your family folder if it's been a few weeks, a month, whatever. You may just want to go in and check that today because there are, there are items in there that you need to see, that you need to know about. So make sure that everyone here, if you've got a family folder, uh, make sure you check that. And if you don't have one, let me know and we'll make sure you get one. But please be praying for our Vacation Bible School. We're excited about all of the children uh, that have already registered. And we know that several just don't register, but they come that day and register, and that's fine too. So if you haven't told me you're helping and you would like to be involved with VBS, even if you could just come one day, that would be so great. And so just come to the meeting tonight, or if you can't be there tonight, please just let me know uh, if you're able to come and help. And as I mentioned last Sunday, Friday, we have a, a closing program at 1130. 
and uh, Joshua's going to be grilling outside. We'll have a popcorn machine. We'll have a bouncy house. And uh, this is our opportunity to actually get to meet, hopefully, some of the moms and dads and the relatives that will be coming. And we want to invite you as a church family as well to be there for that so we can have more to mix and mingle uh, with their family members. So I hope that some of you will be able to come. And uh, also, if some could just come and also uh, plan on not only eating, but planning on helping us to get set up uh, the next Sunday, uh, that very next Sunday, we're actually having a Fifth Sunday Fellowship. And so we're looking forward to that. The Fifth Sunday Fellowship, you'll notice in the bulletin, but we're having a wedding shower uh, for Joshua and Holly Beth. Now, we're also having our Adult Bible Fellowships that afternoon at 1 o'clock. So uh, we're not going to watch them open the gifts or anything, but we're just going to have gifts for them. They can take them home. And uh, so if you would like to contribute uh, to their um, ongoing celebration, uh, please bring a gift then on June, June 30th. Also, I want to mention that tonight we will be meeting for our Adult Bible Fellowships and our Youth Sunday School. All right, at this time, before uh, we sing, I'd like to go in and ask if Eliza would come and then Michael, Michael's somewhere, Michael's in the back, and then Michael can come right after Eliza. You can come on up if you want. You can be all ready right after she finishes. Hello, my name is Eliza Farr. I live in Clinton, Wisconsin. I am one of the six teenagers here from the field program at Camp Joy. There is a 12-day program from June 10th to the 22nd, and it has been such a blessing. I have learned so much, and I just wanted to share like a little bit of it. I've been convicted in some areas and in learning and wanting to follow the Lord more. But one of the things that Pastor Moore has taught us in our sessions is to be rightly motivated, completely yielded, and fully empowered. So to be rightly motivated, you have to have motivation, and you have to have the right motivation. It's not just about the why, but also, the, not just about the what, but the why and how you do it. If you do something with the wrong motive, then that is necessarily could be pleasing to God. If you do it with the wrong motive, then it won't be pleasing to God. And there are three different motives. So there would be approval of man, elite love, and then God's reward. And many times we think of a reward as a bad thing, but if it's God's reward, it is good, and we should be seeking after it, because if we are not, then we are saying his reward is not good enough. And that is one of them. And then completely yielded would be completely yielded to God, obviously. And then after we are rightly motivated and completely yielded, then we can be fully empowered to do God's will. And that is just the best thing to me, because it is very important to understand why we do things and not just what. Well, Eliza said a lot of what I was going to say, but like she said, we talked about being um, having the right motive, and that's what really spoke to me because I feel like that's one thing that's very um, not talked about a lot, and I had never pulled um, in an in-depth conversation and like study on motivation, and that really spoke to me. Um, but like she said, it's a it's about a two-week program. And we're going to help out at Camp Joy and London Ministries, and um, you know, help minister a little bit to the to the camp folks. And, and I, I I really like people. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's always good to hear from camp ministries. Turn your hymnals to number two. Number two. We'll stand together as we sing all three verses. Come, <coughs> Christians, join to sing. Number two. Yeah. Hey. 
scripture reading this morning will be in Philippians 3, verses 1 through 14. It's Philippians 3, starting verse 1. It says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me, indeed, is not grievous. But for you, it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the Spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ? Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Joshua, let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Father, we thank you so much for the scriptures. We thank you for the example of the believers, of those who have gone before us, those who have endured much for the sake of the gospel. Lord, may we learn today from their example to us. We thank you today for the opportunity to be together, for the opportunity to learn from your word, to fellowship with one another, to rejoice with one another, to weep with those that weep. We ask, Lord, that you would help us as a church to continue to grow, to continue to please you, to grow spiritually, but to please you most of all. Father, we do thank you for other churches in our state. We thank you today for Maranatha Baptist University, um, for Maranatha Baptist Church. We pray for Pastor Christian and Jenny Markle in Phillips, Wisconsin, that you would please encourage them today. We ask, Lord, that you would help them as they prepare for their vacation Bible school. We pray that you would send them many boys and girls to minister to, and we ask, Lord, that you would give them much fruit this week. We also thank you for our missionaries. We thank you for Scott and Robin Jones and the work that they do with uh, the Wisconsin Association of Churches. We pray that you would help them as they meet with pulpit committees, as they uh, drive to do that, as they try to encourage congregations who are needing pastors. Lord, we know that there are several in our state that do not have shepherds, and we pray that you would provide uh, those shepherds for those flocks. Father, we also thank you for JJ and Valerie. We ask, Lord, that you would meet their needs as they're serving you in France. We pray that you would provide for them, especially uh, give Brother JJ good health regarding his eye. We know, Lord, that he has witnessed to so many, and we think of all of the doctors and nurses, hospital staff, that he has witnessed to due to the, the ongoing issues that he has had with his health. Lord, continue to give him the strength and the ability and the grace, the grace from you to do just that. We also ask, Father, that you would be with uh, the various camps that are in our state. We're thankful for Camp Joy and others as well. And we ask, Lord, that you would be with the fuel program, that you would be with uh, the camp this summer as they uh, minister to many boys and girls, teenagers, parents, families throughout the year with the various retreats. We ask, Father, that you would provide for their needs. And, Lord, just give them a great, safe summer ministering for you and for your glory. 
Lord, I do thank you for fathers. Lord, it is a high calling. Lord, I pray that you would help us as fathers to follow you, to really just desire to be faithful. As we will see today, to forget the past, whatever that might include, and reach forward to the things that you have for us. Lord, I pray that you would encourage not just the fathers today, but encourage all of our hearts uh, to do just that. Lord, we do thank you for those serving in our military. We thank you for the service men and women in all of the various branches. And we just pray that at some point today they might be able to hear from a Bible-believing chaplain. Lord, that you would give that chaplain boldness as he presents the truths of the gospel. It's wonderful today to be able even to praise you for the good news, the gospel of how we can be rescued from our sin. All of us are born sinners. And we need salvation. We need someone to save us. And Jesus Christ, God's only Son, was sent here for that purpose, to seek and to save the lost. Dear Heavenly Father, if there's someone here in this building this morning that does not have that relationship with God through Jesus Christ, we pray, Father, that you would do that convicting that we cannot do. We pray that you would draw them to yourself. We pray, Lord, that today would be the day of someone's salvation. Father, we also thank you for those uh, in the military, for Anthony, for Christian, for Jacob, James, Jed, Lucas, and Shem. Uh, Lord, we just pray that you would meet their needs today. I pray that you would surround them with uh, godly company, help them to be able to meet other godly friends that can hold them accountable. And we pray, Father, that you would keep all of these uh, men here that I've just read, that you would keep them close to you and uh, remind them of your love for them. Uh, I pray that they would do your will from the heart. Father, we also thank you for our country. We thank you for the freedoms we have in this country to meet as we are doing to worship you. And we pray that you would be with those who you have allowed to be in office. We pray for President Biden, our Vice President Harris, our Governor Tony Evers, our, our Senators, our, our Representatives. We ask, Lord, that you would be with these men Lord, and women, that they would please just understand their need of Christ and that they would turn in faith to Christ alone to save them from their sins. We ask, Father, that you would help our upcoming Vacation Bible School. We pray that you would give us the strength to labor, to do your will. We pray that we would all have good attitudes as we minister together as a church family. We pray that you would give us a great week where the gospel is proclaimed morning after morning, where we see you do a great work in this place. And Father, we pray that you would allow us to see fruit. We pray that some boy or girl or mom or dad would be saved next week. Lord, as we also just plant gospel seeds, we know at times that others may, uh, may continue to add to that and others may water, but God gives the increase. And so, Lord, just help us to be faithful. I thank you also today for all of the, uh, the guests that are here today for the very first time. We pray that you would help our church family to be a special blessing to them. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for your love for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Turn in your hymnals once again to number 149. 149. He giveth more grace. Sing both verses. <coughs> Thank you. 
sing all three verses, 89, all the way, my Savior.
people said? Amen. Praise the Lord for his faithfulness. All right, the young people may be dismissed for children's church at this time. K-5 through the 6th grade. And again, if you have any questions about Camp Joy, um, talk to one of these young people here today. And uh, ask any questions you'd like. And they're at uh, Calvary Baptist in Watertown tonight. Their service starts at 5, so bro, you could actually swing by here, and if you want to, just pop on in here. We start at 6, so I'd love to have you. All right, let's turn back in our Bibles to the passage that Joshua has already read, Philippians 3. By the way, men, I, I, I should mention this, that uh, the chocolate was just taken out of the freezer about two hours ago. So if all of a sudden during the message you start chomping down on that thing, we just might hear you, so I don't know if you want to do that or not. All right? Maybe save it for later. I don't want to break anyone's teeth or crowns or anything else for that matter. All right, the title of this morning's message is Reaching Forward by Forgetting. Reaching Forward by Forgetting. Of course, Philippians is a prison letter. Paul's in a Roman prison during this time, and these are verses that are probably pretty familiar to all of us, or primarily dealing with verses 13 and 15, and as I've already prayed, this is not just a message for fathers. Uh, I, I try not to do that. I try Mother's Day, Father's Day, I try not to make it just a message for mothers or for fathers, because we all need God's Word, and I believe what we have here, especially in these verses, is Paul really summing up in prison his philosophy, which should really be our philosophy, or if you will, our, our mission statement as a Christian as well. And I thought about last week's message, and by the way, we will, Lord willing, get back into Revelation next Sunday, Revelation, we're starting chapter 10. And uh, last Sunday, we also looked at the life of Paul. We looked at his conversion and his commission from Acts chapter 26, one of the uh, places where Paul recounts his uh, gospel experience, what happened on the Damascus Road. And he did that, of course, in, in defense of uh, Herod Agrippa II. And so that was his conversion. That was his commission. One of the passages, again, from Acts 20, 22. And one of the, the verses I mentioned, coming from a book that Paul wrote as well, I mentioned this last Sunday, was from Ephesians 2.10. And that verse was Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship created what does it say? Created unto Christ Jesus, or created for Christ Jesus unto good works. And I talked about that word workmanship. And we get our word poem from that word. But we're not just to think of, of us, ourselves, again, for we are his, we are his poem. That's, Paul doesn't have in mind here a little, you know, four or five line rhyming a little short poem. He's not, he doesn't have that in mind at all. With this word, he's talking about an epic masterpiece. And I gave those illustrations of this last time, like Iliad or Paradise Lost. Major, massive, epic words. And so think about that, for we are his workmanship created by Christ Jesus unto good works. So what is it that God wants us to do? Because according to this verse, Old things are passed away. We know that from 2 Corinthians 5, 17. The old things are passed away. All things are become new. So every single Christian here today, you are to have a purpose. And God has a purpose for you. Every single Christian here today, you are workmanship. If you look at that word, it's you are an epic masterpiece. Praise God for that. It's only by His grace that we're saved. We're not saved by our good works. And so we can only do anything with God's help and dependent on His grace, dependent on His mercies, dependent on His all-sufficient grace that Paul talks about. So you've got a purpose. Christian, you have a purpose. You have a reason for existing. And Paul did as well. And Paul had to really put some things behind him so that he could do what God wanted him to do. So that he could be that workmanship, that epic masterpiece. It's the same with us. One writer said this, and I wholeheartedly agree with this statement. Churches are full of spiritual cripples, paralyzed by the grudges, 
bitterness, sins, and tragedies of the past. Others try to survive in the present by reliving past successes. Those are the people that oftentimes say, oh, if we could just get back to the 80s or the 70s or the 60s, everything was just perfect back then. I'll keep reading. They must break with that past if they are to pursue the spiritual prize. And that's exactly what we're going to see this morning with Paul. The writer goes on to say, God is interested in what believers do now and in the future. The clearest vision belongs to those who forget the past. Now in Luke 9, we know this verse, Luke 9, verse 62, remember what Jesus said. He said, no one, after putting his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. There are things in order for us to be the epic masterpiece that God wants us to be, and that means different things for different people, because by God's Spirit we all are gifted in different ways. But in order for us to be that epic masterpiece, we've got to say, all right, Lord, what do you want me to do? Like Paul said on the Damascus Road. Lord, what do you want me to do? Is there a reason that you saved me? Is there a reason? Do I have a purpose in my life? Yes. Look at verse 12, if you will. Verse 12. Paul talks about, not that I've already attained or, or obtained. He writes, I've already, or not that I've become perfect. And that word is simply, it's, it's referring to, to maturity. Not as though I'd already attained, either already perfect, but I follow after, I press on, I pursue. If that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. People who let God and His Word shape them and develop them. Paul was recognizing, look, I haven't obtained. Here he was in prison talking about this. I haven't already become spiritually mature. There is no one who is perfect, right? Can I remind everyone that there is no perfect dad? We're striving to be more like Jesus Christ every day, but the only perfect Father is our Heavenly Father. And we can look to Him no matter what. But Paul would say, look, I, I haven't arrived yet, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay hold of that which I need to. I'm pressing on so that I may lay hold of that which was laid hold of or apprehended of Christ Jesus. Now in verses 13 and 14, Paul uses the imagery of, of a runner. There are many things in the past, as we know, that if we focus on them, if we focus on them in our race as a Christian, spiritual race, of course, I'm talking about, maybe some of us in high school or college ran uh, some track or maybe some cross country. I actually, in high school, ran some track. I wasn't good at all. In fact, I remember one time this guy who was really good, his name was Craig Aiken. I mean, I was in the eighth grade, I think. His name was Craig Aiken, and of course, to run track, you have to have track shoes. Put the little spikes in with the little tool. I remember that. I don't know if we still that, do that these days. But I remember that this guy, Craig Aiken, he was really, really good, really, really fast. But he, um, by the way, this has nothing to do with the message. But he, he <laughs> forgot his track shoes. He forgot his track shoes. And he looked and he asked me what size I was. And I told him what size I was. And he said, can I borrow yours? And so I gave him my track shoes. And he went and ran a whole lot faster than than me, than I ever would, in my track shoes. So I thought when he gave me the track shoes back, wow, maybe now, now's my chance. I mean, his skin has touched my track shoes, so maybe I have a chance to be really awesome now as a, make, a, make it into a track star, but no, it, it wasn't meant to be. So anyway, but all of us perhaps have uh, at least seen runners, and we know how intense running must be. And so Paul in verses 13 and 14 uses the imagery of the runner. And the spiritual race, and all of us have a different race, it doesn't matter who gets there first, it just matters that we continue in the race. We do what the Lord wants us to do, and please Him, and live to please Him. As I said, there are many things in our past that can very easily, if we focus on them, stunt our spiritual growth and cause us to be discouraged in our walk with God. So discouraged, and that's why Paul was focused here, so discouraged that we actually fail to do anything worthwhile for the Lord because we're so focused on the past. We're holding on to things that have happened in the past. 
And so a good runner, we know, doesn't take time to look over his shoulder. We're to forget past failures. We're to forget past sins. I like what uh, one writer, Gordon Fee, said. Paul forgot about it. Not that he didn't remember. All right, we can't just wipe things away from our memory. That's what I'm not, su I'm not suggesting that. But he wrote, Paul forgot about it. Not that he didn't remember or learn from it, but paid no attention to it. And I think that really... Uh, grasp the truth of what we're talking about here today, reaching forward by forgetting. I mean, just imagine a runner who's running, and all of a sudden he's running, and I mean, he sees the uh, he sees the finish line, right? And he's running, he sees the goal, and he sees that, and he's focused. And while he's running, you know, he's got other runners around him too. But while he's running, he all of a sudden he stops. All of a sudden he just stops, and he just he turns around, and he says. You know, back in 1995, I failed God. Back in 2002, I sinned. I shouldn't have. Meanwhile, he stopped. He's not continuing. He's not keeping his eye on the finish line. He's going backwards. He's not going forward. Maybe there's some sin that you did way back when. If you have asked forgiveness for that sin... God does not see that sin on your life anymore. Paul rejected Christ. He led men and women to their death. Acts 8 says that. But remember that God no longer holds the sins of the past against us. We have asked forgiveness for that. He made things right with God. I wonder, what if Peter, after he denied the Lord, he's running a race and all of a sudden he denies the Lord. He sees the finish line, but he denies the Lord looks back. I just denied the Lord. Why even bother running anymore? Well, if he would have done that, we would not have First and Second Peter, which was written some 30 years after he denied the Lord. Sometimes we look back, and if we do look back, when we shouldn't look back, we might remember other things. We might actually remember critics. The man at the men's Bible study yesterday talked about what the Bible has to say about criticism. We might actually remember what someone told us way back when. And that, we, it, it, we never forgot it. Not to dwell on it, but we've never forgotten it. And perhaps that's slowing someone down here today. There's a race that God wants you to win, but you remember things you've done in the past, and, you're, and Satan would love to discourage us with the past sins that we have asked forgiveness for. He would love for us to focus on that. Remember, John 8, 44 says that he's a liar. He's a destroyer. The truth is not in him. So he is a liar. He will bring up things from your past because he wants. He doesn't want you to make it to the end. He doesn't want you to keep on striving and pressing on as Paul needed to do. Past. May I say this? The past is not relevant. We might have to seriously pay no attention to the past. Can I also say this? What about missed opportunities? Oh, if I would have only done this, then that can drag us down. Missed opportunities. What about di just disasters? Things that you wish you would not have done. You should have, you should have done this. You, you could have done that, but you didn't. And all, that's all of us here today. Things from the past. I've mentioned Corey Ten Boom here before. Her and her family, of course, were uh, held prisoners in a Nazi concentration camp in Ravensbrück. And she actually later on said this, When we confess our sins, God cast them into the deepest ocean, gone forever. And then she said this, And even though I cannot find a scripture for it, I believe God then places a sign out there that says, No fishing allowed. Don't go back. No fishing allowed. It's been forgiven. Your race is seriously stunted if you stop the race all of a sudden and start looking back, start looking over your shoulder. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but this person said this. Yeah, I did this sin way back when. It's forgiven. Paul needed to press on, and that included forgetting past failures and sins as well. Now, um, there's also consequences. We understand that from sin. 
Consequences remain, but the sins are forgiven. Many people in the Bible, men and women, had to deal with the consequences of their sins. But when our past sins are remembered by Christians, remember, no fishing. No fishing allowed. Remember God's forgiveness. Thank Him immensely for what He has provided through His forgiveness. 1 John 1, 9. God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Remember God's forgiveness and thank Him immensely and then move on. How many men and women, by remembering our past sins, for how many men and women here maybe is that causing us to, to not finish well? To not maybe do what God wants us to do? Because remember, epic masterpiece. We're His workmanship. He's got a huge, epic masterpiece that He wants us to do in our lives. And slowing down and looking back will not help. Press on. Press on by God's grace. Pursue what God wants you to do and don't live in the past, especially regarding past sins and failures. Someone has said, learn from the past, log the lessons from the past, but leave the past. I'll repeat that. Learn from the past, log the lessons from the past. We need to learn from the past, absolutely. But leave the past. So forget the past. Forgive those who have perhaps done you wrong cause you to sin, cause you pain even. Focus on the present. Forgive, Ephesians 4.32, as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Paul knew that he wanted to please God with, with a singular focus. We talked about that, right? We, we already read those verses that Joshua read. He said in verse 10, that I may know Him, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Paul also broke with not only a lot of the things that he did that were wicked and against God, such as causing Christians to die, <coughs> forcing Christians to blaspheme the name of the Lord Jesus as a zealous Jew. The men will look, look more into this tonight in Paul's life. But Paul also had to break with a lot of religious successes as well. Maybe that's hindering some of our growth. Not just past sins, past failures, disappointments, critics, those who said you'll never survive, those who said you can't do anything, those who have said you can't succeed in this mission God's given you, those who said you, you look at you, look at your earlier life, and you cannot possibly do something. Critics. Critics. Well, Paul had a lot of good things that he had to put behind him as well, I think. Look earlier in the passage in verses 5 and 6. Verses 5 and 6, all of these things were um, in these verses were reasons that Paul, if he would have looked back, he might have had confidence in the flesh. As a Jew, circumcised the eighth day, the first four, uh, things that were his possession just by birth. Again, all reasons why he might have confidence in in the flesh, circumcised the eighth day as a Jew, according to Leviticus chapter 12 and verse 3. Of the stock of Israel, descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and, ja and, uh, and Jacob. He could have said, look at me. Look at who I am. The tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin was a very distinguished tribe. He gave Israel her first king. And it's also the tribe that um, aligned itself with faithful Judah. Uh, when Israel divided into the two nations, remember the time of Rehoboam. The tribe of Benjamin, right? And fourthly, a uh, Hebrew of the Hebrews. Not just Jews, Hellenistic Jews who uh, had embraced Greek culture. But these were pure bloods. Paul was raised by his parents as a Hebrew of the Hebrews. He was not ashamed of his Jewishness. What else? Those were four things possessions by birth, just due to birth as a Jew. But the next three things were just simply by really his conviction, his own, his own choice. Concerning the law, a Pharisee. A Pharisee. Tells us that among the Jews there were these, this elite group. One writer said there were approximately in Paul's time 6,000 Pharisees 
And these were what some have called the spiritual athletes of Judaism. Their name means the separated ones. And uh, they had separated themselves from all common life and all the common tasks in order to make it their one aim, their one aim to keep all the, the smallest details of the law. And Jesus reprimands them, right, in Matthew 23, with the seven woes, woe unto you. What else? What else? I can't look back. There's things in the past. And if I, if I focus on those successes, it's going to stop me from reaching the finish line. What else? What does Paul say? Concerning zeal, I persecuted the church. He wasn't just merely uh, a brain or, or a thinker. I mean, he was, but he actually was an active fighter. He was an active fighter against them, against believers. Uh, and he actually mentions in Romans chapter 10 and verse 2 his observation that the Jews of his day have a zeal, Romans 10 to have a zeal for God, but it was not according to knowledge. And then he says concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. And that shows that Paul achieved the standard of righteousness which in that day was accepted for men of that day. The law was interpreted, how it was interpreted, how it was taught. That there were those uh, that day who were actually deceived into thinking that they were even blameless without sin. Paul rejects all of that. What does he say in the next verse? Look in verse 7. He rejects all confidence in the flesh. And perhaps that's what we need to do as well because that's pride. It's exactly what it is. It's pride. Look at verse 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss. For Christ. Gain is plural. All those things. Not just one thing, but all those things I just mentioned. And loss is singular. Those various gains I just mentioned, they're all counted as one loss. All of that, all of that stuff that I had, that I could be, that gives me clout, that caused me, gives me a reason to be, to be proud. It's all loss. For the sake of Christ. Paul's gain in verse 8 was Jesus Christ. I count all things lost. Paul did not only count his religious pedigree as a loss, but he counted all things lost in view of all the excellencies and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. There might be some things in the past, and maybe there again, it's that everything good happened back then in this decade. Everything good happened when, everything good happened in this particular search situation all hope is gone, right? Nothing good can ever... God can never do anything else in the future. You need to forget some of those things, too. As a group of, as a group of men known as the Cambridge Seven, the Cambridge Seven included uh, C.T. Studd, missionary C.T. Studd. As they left for China, a news correspondent described them as standing side by side, the Cambridge Seven, went to Cambridge, Cambridge Seven, side by side, renouncing the careers in which they had already gained no small distinction, putting aside the splendid prizes of earthly ambition, taking leave of the social circles in which they shined, and plunging into that warfare whose splendors are seen only by faith, and whose rewards seem so shadowy to the unopened vision of ordinary men. Leaving behind the successes C.T. Studd could have been a very famous cricket player in England, but he left it. So many people said, you know what, I could, I could do that, but I'm keeping my eyes on the prize. What does Paul say in verse 14? Not only are we to forget a lot, and I wonder, is, maybe there's, is there someone here and you're holding on to something from the past, and you need to let that go by God's grace. As a Christian, we cannot finish well if we're, if we're stopping the race and we're thinking about what happened 15 years ago. We're thinking about what someone said 15 years ago. Let it go. Let it go. Move forward. Do what God wants you to do. That epic masterpiece is not going to be completed unless you stop looking at the past and you've got to move forward. Learn from it. Log from it. Believe it. So in verse 14, verse 14, so forgetting those things which are behind, excuse me, uh, verse, uh, verse 13, reaching forth unto those things which are, by four, which are uh, before. Reaching forth, it means to stretch out, stretch out towards something. And in this context, it's, it's to stretch out 
toward the goal. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So again, think of a runner reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Imagine a runner, he's in the act of running toward the finish line, right? And his body is bent. You've all seen this, I'm sure. And his body is bent and he's stretching and he's, he's giving it his all, right? He's leaning forward, moving along this path that God has laid out for him. And he leans forward as his feet carry him toward the finish, the finish line. All of his energy, right? Spiritual, mental, emotional, and even physical as he's fully committed to running. That's Paul. And in order to do that, in order to, in order to reach forward, I need to forget some things. I need to focus on the finish line. And that's what he talks about, right, in verse 14. I press <coughs> toward. I press toward the mark. Mark is the goal. We get our word scope from this. And any hunter would understand that a scope is needed so that you can hit the mark. So it's the mark on which we fix our eyes. In spiritual terms, the, the goal is reaching the end of our earthly existence, having persevered in faith, having followed the Lord and done what He wants us to do. Ultimately, we will reach glorification one day. Paul kept his gaze on the goal. He kept his gaze on the goal. Think about everything that Paul had in his past that could have weighed him down tremendously. So much. So much. He killed people. That was in his past. Spiritually, he was, a, as a Jew, as a Pharisee especially, in their eyes, he was like a spiritual giant for the Pharisees, for the Jews. He was a zealot for the cause of the Jews. But he kept his gaze on the goal. He kept his eyes on the prize. And the prize in the first century was that laurel wreath. 2 Timothy 4, verses 7 and 8. I have fought a good fight. We ought to all be able to, to say this at the end. That should be our desire. Our desire to say this. I fought a good fight. I, I finished my course. I finished my race. We all have a race kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me in that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Christian, God has been so good to us. So many men and women, I mentioned Peter, but so many we could look at and God gave them multiple chances. God forgave them multiple times. Jonah would be another. So many, so many others that are in the, the great faith chapter, Hebrews 11. Read them. What are they doing there? Why? How can that be? Because God forgave them. God forgave them. They continued to do what God wanted them to do. Their work pleased God. Their faith worked. Without faith. It is impossible to please God. So I, I just want to encourage all of us this morning, again, not just dads, but what's holding you back from continuing to finish and to finish well? What are we looking back at? No one is perfect. We all have done things in the past that hopefully we have asked forgiveness for. From others, maybe. But most importantly, from God. And it is Satan himself, our enemy, God's enemy, that wants us to hold on to those things we've already asked forgiveness for. And he wants us to, to be weighed down by those sins that so easily beset us, right? And he doesn't want us to move forward. He doesn't want us to strain at the prize, at the goal that we should be straining for. He wants us to quit. He wants us to think about what others have said. Maybe they're right. He wants us to stop. He wants us to think, well, maybe, did, did, I really, did I really say I'm sorry? Did God really forgive me? Don't believe the lies of our enemy. Move forward. Press on as Paul pressed on, even saying these words in prison. His entire focus was a singular focus, that I may know Him. And there were things he mentioned he mentions often, not just in Philippians, that he had to forget about. Perhaps God wants us to forget about some things that have happened in the past too. 
There will be consequences. We know that. But what did David say in Psalm 51? Create in me a clean heart, O God. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Why? The very next verse says, So that sinners may be restored unto, unto thee. So that transgressors will learn of you. In other words, God, I, I'm going to make this right. David came to him in Psalm 51. Told him, Thou art the man, right? And David finally, after several months, made it right with God, but there were consequences because of his sin. But he still wanted to do a work for God. Psalm 51, again, I still want sinners to be converted unto you. So Lord, create in me, change my heart, forgive me, Lord. I still want to do a work for you. May that be our testimony here today. Reaching forward comes by forgetting the past. What are we holding on to? What are we maybe thinking, God, did you really forgive me for that? Instead of going to 1 John 1, 9, knowing that He's faithful, knowing that He's just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The devil doesn't, we know this, right? Satan does not want us to do anything for the Lord. He wants us to be defeated and discouraged because of what someone has said to us in the past, because of what maybe we did in the past. And God does not want that. We are His workmanship. Thank God for His love today. And His grace that He gives us. And His mercies that are new every day. Let's pray. Father, help us as believers to focus on living for You, to focus on pleasing You. That was Paul's one aim. His solitary focus. And there was so much that he had in his background. There was so much baggage that he had. Any of us can easily make that excuse, but it's just that. It's an excuse for not running the race You want us to run. Father, we're thankful for the good news of salvation. I pray today that if there's someone here and they've never turned and repented of their sin and put their faith in Christ for salvation, that today they would see that they need to do this today. That they should not put this decision off to put their faith and trust in Christ alone. Lord, I pray, work in hearts. This time I just want to give just a moment or two of silence as we just all talk to the Lord. And again, believer, I want to encourage us today to finish well. It will mean not focusing on what has happened in the past, good or bad, because that can be a huge distraction from moving forward. I want to encourage us to press on like Paul did, forgetting the past, reaching forward, straining stretching to what lies before us, what God has for us to do. Let's just take a few moments of silent prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, thank You for Your love. Thank You for Your compassions, which are new every day. Thank You for Your mercies that fail not. Lord, we thank You for Your love. We thank You for Your forgiveness. We thank You that You give second and third and fourth and fifth and more chances. So Lord, I pray that we would not linger in the past, but that we would move forward and do what You want us to do the consequences we might have to, to carry with us as we go to the finish line. But may we not look back. May we move forward and do, by Your grace, what we can do for You, for Your glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now let's all stand at this time. To be able to stand. I do want to encourage all of us to follow the Lord's leading and how He might have worked through this message this morning. I don't know what He's done in your heart. I know what He's done in mine. 
But I just want to encourage you to obey what the Lord has told you to obey. Maybe it's some it's something that you just need to let go. Maybe it's someone that you need to say, you know what, I, I just need to ask forgiveness from you, from you, and then move forward and follow the Lord and what He wants you to do. Jacob, would you please come at this time? We'll sing Living for Jesus. And after the song is over, if I can be of any help uh, to anyone or any of our church members here, make sure you see someone here today. If, if, uh, if I can pray with you or someone from our church, again, you, you would like someone to pray with you or you'd like to talk to someone. Uh, we have Bible studies. If you'd like us to uh, start up a Bible study with you, if you've got questions, that's why we're here. And uh, we encourage you to talk to someone today about the new <coughs> Jacob, would you please come? Turn in your hymnals to number 369. 369. We'll sing all, we'll sing the first, second, and the last of 369. The first, second, and the last. <laughs> Center 
And again, uh, ladies, if your husband was not able to be here today, uh, please make sure you bring him. Uh, one of the goodies there in the back. Men, don't forget those. We're going to have to put them in the freezer for this afternoon, and we'll bring them back out tonight. And uh, whatever's left from uh, tonight, if there are others um, left, we will go on and uh, just take care of that little matter. All right, tonight. But we got to wait till tonight. All right, this time I'll ask Jacob, if you please dismiss us in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, I thank you for the words that we are able to hear from your word today. I thank you for the blessing that we are able to hear. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to apply the message to our lives, Lord, and help to keep moving forward and by not looking back. Lord, I pray that you would bless this next week that's coming up, Lord. Please help us be able to serve you throughout it and glorify you in everything we do. In your name I pray.